Hello, how are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you? Good. Introduce yourself and tell us what you do. My name is Tambudzai Madzimure. I'm the project manager of women empowerment with HIFOS. Okay. Do you have a role model and who are they? I do have a number of role models, but I think now I'll mention Dr. Divine Kakula. Um, I think when you listen to her story about how she started a business and how she conducts her business, it's such an inspiring story. In your opinion, is it important to have um, outstanding women to look up to? Definitely. I think everyone needs an outstanding woman to look up to um, because it also helps you. I think sometimes when you're getting weaker, it helps you to reach for that goal. Okay. Why is it important to amplify the work of the feminist movement? Uh, it's important to uh, amplify the work of the feminist movement because um, I think we need to talk about the achievements, we need to talk about the challenges, we need people to actually be aware. So continuously talking about it and amplifying that voice helps you to actually get there. Get there. Okay, so in what way do you think campaigns like the 16 Days Against Gender-Based Violence can help end violence? <laughs> Uh, the 16 days is useful. Um, it can help in that we get uh, people to talk about, I think for the 16 days people do talk about uh, gender-based violence, all forms of gender-based violence. Uh, sometimes these are things that in society we don't really want to talk about. We want to pretend like they don't exist. So days like that are very important because they help us to really come out in the open and listen to maybe first-hand stories and talk about actions or work that is being being done around the same. Interesting. That's a lovely dress you're wearing. Uh, what color is associated with the campaign this year? Like the color of my dress, orange. Okay. What is this year's theme? This year's theme is orange, the world uh, prevent uh, violence against women and girls now. Okay. What does that theme represent to you? I think it's a call to action. It's calling everybody to participate because if we say end violence against women and girls now, it's, it's in the immediate. So it's something we need to act on as we, as we go on a daily basis. Okay. So why 16 days? 16 days. Well, I think 16 days is really a period where different organizations and individuals working globally can come together to amplify their voice and messages against gender-based violence. So it really is a period where we can actually have kind of uh, many voices speaking to the different challenges that are faced. Okay. Um... So who should participate in this campaign? In the, days? the campaign is for everyone. So everyone and anyone should participate in the campaign. All right. What forms of gender-based violence do you know? Uh, I think there are many. Uh, at the moment in Zimbabwe, the most topical one has been around child marriages. I think which really has been a huge challenge in our society. We also have got uh, intimate partner violence. And I think we have seen that has increased, especially within the COVID period. And we've got a lot of sexual, emotional and psychological violence. And sometimes those are, that is violent that is happening behind closed doors. And people really don't get to see that there is abuse that is going on unless somebody speaks out about it. Would you say there's been progress made since uh, 1991 when the campaign started? Definitely lots of progress. I think recently I've been listening or reading more to uh, the work that Eva Joyce Wynn was sharing because she was part of the people that started the campaign and she has been speaking to the gains and it's amazing when we really sit down and reflect. I think sometimes the end goal we say when there is zero violence we say we've got there but before that there are steps that have been taken or that are being taken that are building blocks so definitely there's been progress and you see that in the laws that have been introduced in some cases in some countries they actually do have penalties uh, for crimes uh, relating to gender-based violence so yeah there's a lot and I think awareness raising there's a lot of information that goes out in the communities there's also setups that have been put in place to support victims uh, what one thing would you then say to the group that started this campaign I would say thank you, thank you, thank you. We can never thank them enough. Um, I think they started a good thing. It is a journey that along the way we will all step in to do our part and the next generations will also step in to do their part. So yeah, I think it was a, it was a noble thing. It really, we appreciate that the group really thought of this and it is making an impact worldwide. All right. Do you think, in your opinion, we can get to a point where gender-based violence is eradicated.
it is something that we continue to aspire to so it's continuous work it is our hope that in our generation we will see the end of it and that can only happen where you actually see um, action from the individuals to also uh, the governments doing their part to ensure that there is stiffer penalties and punishments for people that are actually uh, involved in such crimes has the COVID-19 pandemic affected gender-based violence in any way? Definitely. Um, we have also been doing uh, some work with women's organizations and in their reports around uh, the impact of uh, COVID-19, where the reports of uh, increases in uh, domestic violence, especially intimate partner violence, and some of them relate to uh, the reduction of income in the family, issues relating to SRHR needs of the different families. So definitely you have seen that there's been an increase in this period. Okay. What's one challenge that you have faced in trying to fight uh, gender-based violence? I think one of the biggest challenges in our society is uh, the culture of silence. People don't want to talk about it and even sometimes when you go and report to um, the police, the police then takes it just as a as a, it's an issue between two people and they don't want to be involved. There is always case you hear stories that have been reported and then people withdrawing the charges because of pressure either from family or even sometimes from the police themselves where they encourage the victims to go and talk to each other and sort out the issues. Okay, interesting you mentioned the police. Uh, so where can people who have experienced gender-based violence get help from? Uh, there are various uh, places. So yes, the police, you can actually go and report. Although I think we have noted some research and reports have noted that a lot of the times uh, gender-based violence, especially domestic related, happens at night and by which time some of the uh, units that can support victims are closed. They operate from eight to five. So maybe it is something that we also need to continuously advocate for so that we've got 24-hour police uh, support and service to victims of domestic violence but you also have got women's organizations speaking in our case in Zimbabwe organizations like Masasa Project that have got a couple of shelters uh, across the country there's also a toll-free line that people can call where they can get support but also just to talk to someone I'm sure if we engage and talk to uh, people around us you will get somebody that can direct you to the right right place where you can get assistance and support okay uh, so how best can society assist with this fight against gender-based violence? I think as a society we need to accept that uh, gender-based violence is real. We need to also take action. It is up to each and every one of us to act and to eliminate uh, gender-based violence from our communities. We need to do away with a culture that's that, that a blaming culture because a lot of the times people look at uh, the situation and it normally is the victim that is uh, blamed for something going wrong uh, when there is gender-based violence. So as a society we need to speak up we need to speak out we need to challenge those that are actually committing those crimes okay uh, what can one do if they know a victim of gender-based violence I think they owe it to the person to encourage them to seek support either go with them walk the that journey with them to help them get the support and the assistance but also to speak out because it depends sometimes in our families we've got people with authority and if they are aware of things that are going on that are wrong that need to be spoken about they should then uh, speak about it or uh, approach the right person that can help them to um, to address the matter um, what do you think needs to be done to increase or raise more awareness on gender-based violence? I think continuous uh, information needs to be made available uh, more in the areas where people are located because sometimes it feels like that information is too far away and it's not accessible even the language it comes in so we need to be cognizant of uh, the fact that communities need that information available to them at their level within their communities if you're in a village you need to know if something happens who do I approach where do I go for the different types of crime what exactly do I need to do in order to be able to get the support and assistance that I need? Okay. Uh, what has been the most memorable highs for you when raising awareness against GBV? Um, several, but I will single out uh, 2017 when we had a uh, 
sex, it was a gender-based violence uh, conference with women working on farms. It was mainly working on farms in Mashonan and Central. You then get to realize that not much information is there. What we were calling sexual harassment in the workplace had been normalized in some cases, and the women were shocked to learn that it actually is sexual harassment. Okay. Does your organization have a policy on GBV? Yes, they do. Okay. Uh, can you tell us a bit about that, if you know it? Well, they do have it, and I think it's a document that is there, that is uh, our HR makes uh, all the employees aware of. And I've not, uh, I think we've been lucky, we haven't had a situation where it has had to be used, but it is a document that is available and every employee has access to the document should they actually need it. Do you think such policies help organizations, in your opinion? Uh, policies in themselves are very helpful, but they need to be supported by structures on the ground to be able to implement them. So yes, having a document that everyone is aware of is one part, but we also need to have the document being used so that people know if there is a challenge, how do they go about reporting it? And there also needs to be a fair system that is in place where people can feel that the issues are being taken seriously and addressed. Alright, um, how have you been raising awareness this year? I think through various means, I have been talking uh, through my network, we talk about the day, I've been sharing information with, within the family as well, and I think through the work, the work has been uh, also afforded us the opportunity to go into different communities and be part of efforts to share information and educate people around gender-based violence. Do you have more activities planned for beyond the 16 days period? Uh, definitely. In the work that we do, working with women leaders, uh, gender-based violence is something that we have to address uh, throughout uh, the process. Uh, as women leaders, as they uh, go on their leadership journey, they face various and different challenges. And in a lot of cases, uh, those need to be addressed. So it's constantly talking and making information available to the women leaders uh, throughout the year. So yes, for us, we say uh, prevention of gender-based violence should be something that is throughout the year and not specifically only uh, focusing on the 16 days. Does the state have a role to play in the fight against gender-based violence? Definitely, the state has got a key role to play, I think, in the laws that they actually put in place, but more importantly, in ensuring that those uh, police laws are actually implemented. If there's one thing you would have, you could request from the state to do um, around issues of gender-based violence, what one thing would you ask them to, to do? Well, I think at the moment in Zimbabwe, we've got a marriage bill that needs to be passed into an act, and that will actually enable some of the crimes uh, that uh, we are facing as a community, as a country, that are a challenge to us can actually find redress. So it is actually calling upon the government to make every effort through the Ministry of Justice to ensure that uh, the corrections are made quickly and that that bill is uh, passed in Parliament and it becomes uh, something that we can quickly start to implement. Okay. Uh, do you have any quick message uh, for young women across the country? Young women, I think as young women we should not remain silent. If we're facing abuse of any sort, let us speak up. Let's also look out for each other in our environments and let's encourage each other to report and seek help and support where it's needed. Thank you, Tambudzai. It's been uh, great 30 questions. Thanks. <laughs>